Hey there YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Wellinformed. Whether you've just purchased your Tesla or whether you're an existing owner, these are my 7 tips I wish I knew earlier for my Tesla Model 3 and equally if you have a Tesla Model Y, this will be mostly relevant to you also. So in this video, you will see some accessories that I purchased to enhance and protect the car in addition to just general hints and tips from drivability and convenience to battery maintenance that you may not know to get the very best out of your Tesla. All from what I've learned from my time of ownership. Essentially, the goal for me in this video is to get more from your vehicle where possible. I expect some of the tips you may already know and equally, there will be some tips that perhaps you did not know. You tend to find with Tesla vehicles, there's always another hint or tip that you didn't know and that's mostly thanks to the over the air updates or it's just generally buried in the manual like my battery degradation tip that I'm about to show you. Right, lots to get through, so let's jump right into the thick of things. Don't forget to hit that like button to show me some of your virtual love and support for Tesla and EV content. Hit the subscribe button to follow my Tesla EV journey with me. And finally, hit the notification bell so you're notified of all my upcoming electric car videos as soon as they're available. The first point I want to reflect on is something I've discussed before and I really, really can't recommend it enough. I use my own hard cash for it and I'd 100% do it again if I needed to. And that's adding wheel protection. There are different forms of protection, but the method I chose is the best looking and requires the least attention by far. This is in particular to the Tesla Model 3 wheels and the 18 inch tire selection. Whilst they are the free selection on the Tesla configurator and the 18 inch offer the most efficient drive, but a big downside to that is that they are incredibly easy to curb. So why is that and what is the problem? Well, the standard 18 inch wheels, they poke out ever so slightly on the edge, just so the wheel cover can actually fit inside that for a snug flush error look. But whether you decide to rock the standard aero wheels or if you do decide to remove them aero wheel covers and just bang on a standard wheel kit, your alloys will stick out, making it prone to curb rush. That is not ideal, so my solution to this was to buy these third party wheel covers. And I'll pop a video link on the screen so you can check out the installation process and how I purchased them, literally everything that you need to know. Attentively, if you want to watch the rest of the video, the link is also in the description of the video, like so. But what makes this wheel cover so special to just a standard wheel kit and the 19 inch wheels is that it literally costs you around like 10% of the 19 inch wheel option and the very best part is that it acts as a layer of protection over the original alloys and I installed these at the start of the year and hands up it did have a gentle knock in a narrow lane in the parking lot against those really high curbs and yes it was me and it wasn't the wife this time and as a result I then simply purchased a replacement cover and I fitted it at home all over again it was a super easy process didn't cost the end of the world and I avoided booking a repair with a garage just for maximum convenience plus it can't just be me thinking that the matte black wheel covers is much more suited than the original grey not to shoot down the gunmetal grey look I do like it but the matte black covers I have just immediately feel at home with the black notes in the car. If you're worried about covers possibly scratching your original wheels, I can reassure you from replacing the original cover that I had no visible scratches from the clips or additional wear from the cover, possibly thanks to the precaution measures that I did take, but long story short, this does offer a layer of protection for your alloys, it looks great and it costs a fraction to the 19 inch wheel upgrade. This is my first tip and I'd definitely purchase them again if I got a new Model 3 on order. So my second tip is for existing owners or new owners of either the 3 or the Y and it's to do with range display improvements and I'll talk about rectifying potential degradation next. But immediately from delivery or whenever really, I always advocate for your range to be displayed as a percentage rather than miles and that's because with percentage, your battery capacity is definitive. If it's half full, it's 50% whereas mileage is subjective. You may display 100 miles on your screen, but if you're flooring it like you're on a drag ship, you're not getting 100 miles, mate. Sorry to break it to you, Mad Max. But look at your iPhone. That displays battery as a percentage rather than simply how much talk time you have left for the exact same reason. But what happens if you're at 100% and your range is not what you'd expect or you've noticed that the accuracy is off? To clarify, your Tesla probably isn't a dud, as battery faults are rare. Plus you also have an eight year battery warranty subject to mileage limits, but to reassure you, 
any mileage displayed is taken from the US EPA rated range. So for any recent EU or UK buyers that may be assessing the uh, max range on the screen, straight up it will not display it in that WLTP rated range like you'd naturally think. This will be based off the EPA rated range as standard, which is going to be slightly lower, but more representable to real world conditions. That one clarification normally explains any initial deficit concerns at first sight. If you've noticed accuracy of that mileage is off by quite a bit, that may be because you've removed those error covers and that does affect your vehicle efficiency a little. But you can actually change some settings within the car to help reflect that external change. This really helps with long journeys because the car will then take into account that small adjustment enhancing the accuracy when the navigation is working out your charging stops. Plus your car on the Tesla app and the main display will now show the car without the wheel covers. Tip number three, but related to tip two, if your car is showing higher than anticipated levels of degradation, do not fear the worst just yet. You can help your car and the BMS, AKA the battery management system to recover some of them anticipated losses. Simply drive your car battery down to somewhere around the 20% level, leave it for at least four hours or ideally overnight without sentry mode because we want the car to go into that deep sleep mode, then charge to 100% straight after, literally all the way, let it take every kilowatt hour of electricity possible. You may then see the car reflect a slightly higher range due to the BMS balancing the cells better it's a simple software correction tip. If your Tesla doesn't let you get to 100%, there is another tip for that too. Leave your Tesla on a low state of charge for say four to six hours and below 50%, but I try aim for closer to that 20% level again. You should have sentry mode turn off also, but do try that a number of times across the year, even just once a month. Just dip it below 50% if you don't normally do that. And this just helps calibrate it to be in a tip top shape. If you are still experiencing issues, do seek help, aka calling the experts via a service ticket. The fourth tip may be a massive time saver if you're not already doing this, and take note new buyers. So whenever you plan to supercharge, you must, and I can't stress it enough, navigate to a supercharger. The reason you want to do that is because it will give you a quicker charging speed, and therefore a quicker charging stop. The reason it is quicker is because the battery is then preconditioning essentially and the car is deliberately warming the battery to the optimum temperature ahead of arrival. This essentially opens the door to a quicker charge off the mark. If you're just trickle charging at seven kilowatts, like potentially home charging, you don't need to do this whatsoever. Now, this used to be exclusive to superchargers and you used to have to navigate to a local supercharger if you wanted preconditioning for non-Tesla rapid chargers. Thankfully though, I understand that an over there update actually enabled this feature direct from the Tesla navigation for them rapid chargers too, like IONT for example. Therefore, this gives the car the same treatment and you get the best possible charging session available just by using the navigation within the car. The screen will tell you when it's preconditioning close to the destination as the navigation will know your distance, plus it can suck out additional energy prior to the stop. The fifth tip, call me smooth criminal or not, but I've stolen, well, technically I'm not actually taking any credit for this, but Bjorn, AKA the Norwegian EV legend, consistently drills this advice because he's a legend and he's right. ABC, and that's not practicing the alphabet, but always be charging. So if you're planning on doing a long trip, if you can utilize localized charging facilities, whether that's using a car park with a seven kilowatt slow charge, or even the opportunity to use the mobile charger and achieve two to three kilowatts an hour, if possible. Whilst you are doing your errands, just do it. This just reduces the likelihood of a supercharge at some point, if part of a longer journey. And crucially, you don't notice the charging time if you're physically doing something more enjoyable at the time. Maybe take your partner out for some good grub with those current petrol savings. Make them appreciate that Tesla purchase more. Forget smooth criminal, I'm now a smooth operator. I really do need to get better jokes. So, what do you need to do if you're leaving your vehicle for a long period of time? And that's gonna be useful if you're going on holiday for a long period of time. If you are, you should take into account if it's not plugged into a charger. And as a guide, your car will roughly use 1% a day. Don't forget to turn sentry mode off and do not check the app. This is just a rough guide and I've experienced much lower energy consumption over a week of no usage than that guide figure. But 1% is a good guide to work with. You can take a look at the video on the screen now for the full download as a live example if you wanted to. Ultimately, 
if you can, it is more ideal to have it sit around 80% or lower and have it plugged in charging for the duration of your stay and then the car can just suckle on the energy whenever it wants to. The final point is charging costs. So if you do home charging, it may be worth considering utilizing a EV friendly tariff and this effectively delivers you a better rate overnight. So when you charge your car, it's usually heavily discounted for a number of hours. Now, if you're savvy like me, you can also use this time to charge your other devices around the house and set the dishwasher to come on during that set time in the night. That's because the day rate of electricity is higher than normal. And with today's electricity prices, it's not always a straightforward choice as what it used to be. So do weigh it up against how much energy utilize in the day to help i did a video on charging literally just before the crisis hit but it's worth viewing just to give you an idea of an ev tariff compared to standard and fixed prices and what that could be as you could be paying like four times less than what you do to charge your car now it's definitely worth looking into doing your own research to see if it works out better for your current circumstances but just having the ev effectively does open the door to those tariffs that aren't available to the general public it's always worth considering if it can save you some extra money along the way. So to conclude, these are just some big but small tips that have helped me get the most from my car. Hopefully this will help you get more out of your car or it makes you better prepared for those longer journeys. I recently did a video on Tesla accessories that do make your Tesla life more convenient. And if you want that video, I'll leave it on the screen now. Otherwise, what do you guys think? Did you know all of these tips? I reckon there's definitely a few more tips that I didn't mention that do deserve a mention. So do let me know in the comment section below if you know any more significant ones that I don't already utilize. If you're not sure what to comment and you want to show me you got this far in the video, you could simply comment, Adam, you smooth operator, and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. If you're not done so already, hit that like button, subscribe and share the video with your friends and family and or any other groups that may find this beneficial. As always, you folks have been great and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.